Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to a slightly ho hoarse, croaky, but poppified, angry dentist. Let's wait for this lot to go past. Back in the old heap today. Don't have to worry about the radio coming on. This Nothing works in this car, so... Yeah, the radio can be relied upon not to work. So how are you? If you're really, really eagle-eyed, then you may have noticed that I've got a, another new phone. You are looking at me on the new Google Nexus, uh, not Nexus, uh, Pixel 2, which is a sort of the next in the logical direction. It was the Nexus 5, then it was the Nexus 5X, the 6 that nobody liked because it was too big, and then the Pixel, which nobody bought because they still had a 5X and it worked okay and the Pixel was stupidly overpriced and so along comes the uh, Pixel 2 just in time for my, ne my Nexus 5X to pack up so I've had to grit my teeth and I had to grit my teeth hard I tell you and buy it because it's 800 quid <sighs> however I've always worked on the basis that whatever computer you buy for it to be of any use at all to anyone who's a creator I'm not talking about a consumer if you're just you know if all you do is just browse email and surf the web then what you need is an iPad or something but if you're at all creative and doing anything at all in the computing space as they call it then uh, you need to spend about two thousand pounds on the computer and funnily enough that hasn't changed Ever since the uh, uh, 286s and 386s and 486s were the processors, it was always £2,000. It was always more than you could afford, you know? And then, of course, pick, uh, PCs went out of favour. Everyone's got laptops now. But you still, uh, they're still £2,000. They, you know, is about what you need to pay to get what a nice, something that's going to last and that is sort of a bit future proof, you know? So I figure, what the hell, 800 quid for a phone that is a, basically a computer that I'm going to use every day. But um, I'm annoyed because it's £795 in the UK and $795, which effectively is 33% off in the States. And uh, that just shows that there's a lack of competition, you know, the, the old uh, UK competition authorities are not really doing anything about competition as a regulator authorities are for the most part useless aren't they I mean they I mean they really are useless you know the Securities and Exchange Commission didn't see the 2008 debacle coming um, Bernie Madoff <laughs> was was the president of his association before he was uh, found out of having a multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme uh, Harvey Weinstein was <laughs> was given an, a CBE or something, and just generally, you know, a, a member of BAFTA, a member of uh, the Academy of Motion Moving Pictures Association, or whatever it's called, and uh, no, uh, Demello, Desmond Demello was. Uh, was 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 right. <laughs> Look, CQC were quite happy with Desmond DeMello, the worst dentist ever, largest ever recall of NHS patients. So, just bear that in mind, okay? If ever you're talking about anyone, doesn't matter whether it's the GDC, anyone, the government, anyone, there, people who say that they're in charge and don't worry, they're in charge. They're not in charge. They're not in charge. They don't know. No, they don't know. They all find out after the event, don't they? They always say after the event, no, really? <laughs> no, yeah, really, you know, that was your job, really, to find out, really, not no, really, say no, really, afterwards. So, <clears throat> what's the old Pixel 2 like? Well, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's 
it's, it's sort of got the five inch screen, which is uh, I'd say at the lower, slightly lower end of the sweet spot in terms of screen size. You might, the Nexus 5X was a 5.2 inch screen. I did prefer that. The Nexus 5X just packed up without warning, went into a condition called Google boot loop, which means you lose all your data uh, that isn't backed up. And he's a well-known problem with Nexus 5Xs and, you know, could have, pe people, they could have issued an advisory and saying, look, all these 5Xs are dying, they just die instantly, there's nothing that can be done, they just die with all your data in, in mid-phone call. There's nothing they can't be saved. So, you know, advisory to Google Nexus 5X owners, make sure everything's backed up all the time because it's gonna die. But of course they don't do that, you know, the regulators don't do that. So there's a lot of dead 5Xs around. The, uh, when it takes pictures, it's got a few, I would say it's absolutely no different at all from my 5X. The only thing I would say is obviously faster. It's got a faster processor. And so it is, it is pretty close at the moment to that ideal, which I've never ever seen as a computer since I gave up using the DOS command line, which is that you, you type in something, it does it, you type in something, it does it. In other words, it spends more time waiting for you than you do waiting for it. Uh, most of my lifetime in computers, which is since the 1980s, so about 35 years, 37 years now, I've spent watching timers of one sort or another, egg timers, bars, progression bars, spinning circles, drums, <laughs> little drums. I have spent, I must have spent years looking at these things and this uh, is, is comforting in that it is, there's, a, there's no waiting time for absolutely anything. So that's good. Whether or not the sound is going to be in synchronization with the picture, who knows. what the color quality there's been a bit of a funny color thing the thing I like about I've got that I've got the pixel 2 not the pixel 2 XL because I didn't like the Nexus 6 because I don't want six inch screen the pixel 2 XL is the one with the big screen version I don't want it because I think it's going to be too big and then the other thing against it is it's made by LG and LG made the Nexus 5X the phone that packed up so why would I go from an LG Nexus 5X to an LG pixel 2 XL I mean, why? I mean, please answer in the comments, please. And then, so I've ordered the five inch one, as I should say, it's a little bit smaller than I like, but what, you know, there's, that's the only one on the market, either six or five, that's it. And so, and I don't want to go for a Samsung because uh, I'm fed up with all their crapware they put on it and the fact that the screens, you know, well, the screens, actually the screens on the Samsungs are good, but what they do is they turn the colours right on. There's this, there's this stupid craze at the moment, isn't there? For, first of all, for girls painting on their eyebrows and making, trying to make themselves look like Cleopatra and, and ripping all their jeans. And when, when's that all going to stop? Bring back shoulder pads, that's what I say. And the other thing is... Um, this uh, super saturated pictures. You know, they've developed, they've found their way of sort of developing uh, processing digital colors, uh, processing digital photos to enhance the colors by sort of saturating them at what they call the high dynamic resolution, which basically means white are whites and black are blacks. But in practice means that every picture ends up looking like you painted it by paint by numbers. And the, you know, you've only got to go to the Sunday Times and look at their property section at some of the pictures and they're like, you know, they've got like green, green grass, blue skies and red houses like a, like a child would paint a primary school. <laughs> There's no subtlety. Everything's just like, <laughs> we had this about 20 years ago. It was called EGA. There was a VGA paint box used to paint in 16 colours. <laughs> I mean, my daughter, it was a, was 10 so don't it's not a new thing you know the one thing that the pixel does do is um when you take a still photo it, it records like a tiny bit of video just like a second's worth at the same time and so 
you get a picture that sort of moves and I was uh, I did a reduction on someone's teeth yesterday and I took a picture of the reduction before and after and I was showing my wife <laughs> <laughs> I was showing Mrs. Angry in bed this morning this picture of this tooth reduction on my new phone and the bloody thing smiled at me. I was, we were looking at what we thought was a still and the mouth sort of just did a bit of a smile and we both, we both jumped out of the bed. It's a spooky thing, I tell you. You're not. When you see it for the first time, you'll see what I mean. It's creepy. It is creepy. It's real like in Harry Potter. You know when Harry Potter's going up the stairs and uh, all the pictures are looking at him and like, waving at him as he goes past and you're, you're looking at this still picture and it sort of goes, it smiles at you and you're like, oh my god, what, 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 what the what? Oh. But, you know, apart from that, it's, it's a Nexus 5. I mean, honestly, please don't get it. But you can't buy a Nexus 5 because they self-destruct. So what can you buy? I think uh, an HTC, not an HTC, a uh, OnePlus, OnePlus are the phones to buy at the moment, but you can't get them with love, love, love nor money. So if you're thinking of upgrading your phone in the next six months and you're on Google, you're on Android, put in an order for a uh, OnePlus and uh, get a decent phone at a proper price, you know. I think they're, the only reason why I wanted to, um, why I was sort of forced into getting this Nexus is because I couldn't get a OnePlus. They just haven't got any in the country. Anyway, I'm not well. I don't know why. I'm just feeling a bit croaky. I mean, that, I'm that. It's a good sort of not well in that I'm not really coughing a lot or sneezing or blowing my nose much, but I sound terrible. So I'm out for maximum sympathy with sort of a minimum suffering, which is a great is a great condition to be in, isn't it? As a bloke, you're like, you know, oh. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, could you get out and turn the fire on? Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> but I do feel weary, I do. And I've blown my nose once or twice. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think my I think my um, my central heating packed up yesterday. So I ended up having to suck diesel through a tube. And I probably inhaled a bit or swallowed a bit or something. I think that might be it, you know. I think uh, I read somewhere that uh, diesel's no good for your lungs. I can't remember where I read that. It was probably, I think it was in some story about people in the army trying to get out of uh, out of doing things, and uh, they realised that if you inhaled diesel, it was uh, made you sound terrible. So it might be that. Which I mean, and considering I'm recovering fairly rapidly. And not getting much worse than than that yet. But I don't know. I mean, it opens up the whole subject about what to do, doesn't it? When you're sick, you see, I, you know, being self-employed and everything, the assumption is that you are going to go into work, isn't it? I mean, that's it. You know, your your dentistry is a funny job. It's it's not like you, know, you could be a self-employed shop owner, right? But the difference between that and being a dentist is that a shop owner can say. To, to his sort of wife or, or his assistant look, look after the shop for a couple of hours I'm going down the wholesalers pick up some crisps or something and the business can stay open and it'll still be making money because it's the shoppers that are doing all the work but on, with a personal service like uh, hairdressing or, or dentistry um, you're not working you're not earning so you can't say, uh, carry on making money for a couple of hours, I'm going to go home sick. So you, there's a very, very strong pressure on you to be there all the time. And uh, especially in the days when you were working on a fee-for-item basis, um, you know, on the health service, not so much nowadays, uh, though you could argue that UDAs are fee-for-item. But um, certainly in the private sector it's fee-for-item. That's, and that's the thing that uh, these third party capitation plans liberate you from, okay? They liberate you from the fact that uh, you can, you know, you don't have to spend all the time working. You can, you have to spend some time working and dealing with anybody who's on the plan who comes in that month who's got something wrong with their teeth and just doing your usual checkup and, and uh, uh, plaque control and stuff like that. But 
you can be sick for a week and know that your plan income will be the same that month uh, whether you have a week or two off or not you know I mean it will carry on irrespective so that's that's a very good reason why I recommend to have some sort of plan in place we've, we've got a plan and it brings in about 25 grand a year which is about two months worth of income and we've just done a recent we've done a, like a little survey on how much work we do on the plan and it sort of ties in pretty well it, it matches up pretty well so and that's because in April we're gonna have to put our fees up um, and I do recommend if you've got a plan going that you do put your fees up don't make the mistake of um, you know leaving the fees down and every year being frightened to put them up you know you should put them up because um, once people are on the plan it's quite a big decision for them to leave um, I'm not saying that you won't lose anyone if you put the fees up but uh, you'll lose some people if you keep the fees the same and you have to maintain the standards. In general, with private dentistry, the way to do it is this. You provide a brilliant service uh, below cost. And then what happens is you go to the patients and you say, um, look, as you know, you know, we are providing a brilliant service here. We know you love it. You know, you know, we know you love it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not cost effective you know for us to be cost effective to in providing this service we're going to need to charge you a bit more and the patients will then say yeah Derek you know we can appreciate that you know, you're providing a very very good value for money here and we love the service we do love the service so if you need to put the fees up a bit to maintain that then that's fine the wrong way to do it is to um, is to provide is to continue to provide your old service which is less than you is ideal less than ideal and then um, is he is he gonna reverse out no he's not going to okay he's not going to and then um, and then say to the patients like you know we're going to do a lot here. We're going to upgrade the service. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to get a colour telly in, comfy chairs and everything. But the uh, the downside is the next time you come, uh, we'll be charging you more. And they don't understand that. You know, they, they will then say, "Well, look, I uh, I'm not. You know, I, I'm I'm reasonably happy with your service, and I don't want to pay more. Therefore, I'm going to go somewhere else." So you have to do the service first, and then that justifies the fees not and not do the fees you know uh, and then provide and then and then in the hope that the fees are going to justify the service anyway that's an important lesson I'm sorry I sort of made it sound a bit boring but I mean that is really quite a significant lesson in the provision of private dentistry <coughs> excuse me there we are that was a cough so um, yeah, so honestly, when when I was a young dentist, I used to struggle in, and uh, what you do is you you sort of um, just, you know put a mask on and say to the patient, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not feeling very well today, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we did a little survey, and we you know we found out that the patients would rather we didn't come in; they would far rather. You rang them up and said, "Mr. Watson's got a shocking cold today. I'm sure you don't want to catch it. I'm gonna, we're gonna have to reschedule." And they would rather do that than come in and be coughed over and, and you know, we're not coughed over because obviously you don't cough over them. But no amount of explaining to them about uh, protective barriers and how you know all our we take precautions to protect against AIDS and hepatitis, let alone the rhinovirus. They, they, they're not sympathetic to all that explanation. They just don't. All they know is. You've got a cold and you've not cancelled. You've decided to come in and give everybody your cold. Probably the same way we feel about patients who are coughing and spluttering all over the place and, you know, who, who haven't cancelled and insist on coming and gargling mucus all over us. So if you are sick, then especially if you've got a third party capitation in place, then have a day off. All right, do have a day off. When you're working out your fees, what you should do is you should take this into account. You know, you should you should say there's 52 weeks in a year, 
you know there's ideally there's or, or the simpler way to do it is to say there's 200 working days in the year right or if you work Saturdays call it 250 and then you take off uh, seven days for the bank holiday so that's 193 and then you might want six weeks holiday so that's another 30 that's 163 and then you've got to take off another 10 for sick two weeks off sick 153 and then uh, your birthday 152 and um, and then work out your fees on the basis of 152 working days right or uh, 200 days if you're working Saturdays and then you know you can you can have your two weeks off two weeks in my opinion is you know, you think to yourself, oh, I won't have two weeks. Or I rather, I won't be sick. I won't be so sick, I'm gonna need, who needs two weeks off work? Sick. But in my, in my experience, that is about right. At the end of the year, there are enough days that you are genuinely not fit for work to justify 10 days, including in those sums. And so what, you know, I mean, if it's only eight days or five days, then great, happy days, you know, you're, your sums will work out better, your turnover will be better than you thought. Anyway, do calculate stuff, you know, that's what I think spreadsheeting is, is fantastic. We're looking into buying a 3D imaging scanner and uh, spreadsheeting is involved in that. We've just involved a finance, free finance company. We can now do 0% finance over six or 10 months for people up to 30,000 pounds. And we are, we spreadsheeted that. Um, we've just done our annual survey of patients, and uh, we do that in an interesting way as well, and get quite a reasonable response. Um, so perhaps what I'll do is I'll make that tomorrow's. Um, I'll tell you about the results of our survey and how you can do one and get quite a good response. And it literally takes 60 seconds this survey, but it is really, really very highly targeted towards getting you the sort of information that you need. It's literally only two questions. But the the, the uh, trick is that you ask one of the questions twice in a slightly different format the second time. And uh, by comparing the results between the two, you can get some fantastic uh, insight into your patient base. Oh, there we are. So there's a trailer for tomorrow's WhatsApp. Assuming today's what's it comes out okay. Right, well, it's been, I do enjoy our little chats. It's been nice talking to you. I hope you have a nice day as well. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.